Um, hello and uh, welcome to the launch of this year's uh, CEB Award for Social Cohesion. This is an annual competition which uh, started in uh, 2020 uh, as a means to recognize the contributions to social good uh, all across Europe. Um, so that's one good thing that came out of uh, 2020. And the award is open to um, organizations which are very diverse uh, in their structure and in their uh, field of work but they all have something in common, and which is uh, that they act for a social impact. And uh, in fact, the purpose of uh, today's event, apart from actually uh, launching, the, launching the application process, uh, is also to, uh, to put a spotlight on these actors of uh, social economy and, and social entrepreneurship, and to explore their potential to contributing to, to a, a fairer world, which is uh, based on, on values of solidarity and inclusion. So uh, we look forward to a very insightful discussion today. And, and uh, to this end, I would like to invite the CD governor, Carlo Monticelli, uh, to give us his, uh, his welcoming remarks uh, and his reflections on this topic. So, uh, Mr. Monticelli. Um, thank you, Yelika. Uh, um, um, uh, good morning to, to everybody. I am Carlo Monticelli, the new governor of the SEB. I've uh, taken office a few uh, weeks ago, and I, feel, and I feel very honored to lead this institution. Very happy and very proud uh, to be at the helm of an institution that uh, has uh, the objective of uh, supporting the most vulnerable to make social investment uh, to try and uh, uh, improve uh, inclusion and social and social cohesion. Um, as you know, the SEB is unique uh, in this mandate, uh, and it's really for me uh, a source of, of uh, personal pride to be uh, part of this uh, uh, of this mission, and I'm proud uh, to uh, work uh, with. Uh, a team of uh, dedicated and committed uh, uh, people who are striving with, the, with this objective. And uh, because of our commitment, uh, we do understand uh, that uh, uh, there are plenty of other people that with us uh, share this objective. And the purpose of this award uh, is uh, really to reach out to all of you who are listening to me now and to all uh, those uh, who are hopefully and very many to hear about the SEB and about uh, the SEB award. Uh, the SEB award, uh, uh, this is the third time uh, that uh, is being launched, uh, is just uh, an instrument that we thought uh, could be useful to uh, stimulate uh, uh, in the diffusion and uh, mutual knowledge of uh, good ideas and practices uh, of uh, the uh, very many um, social actors that uh, really are creative in uh, obtaining our common uh, objective a good impact to make uh, the life uh, of people, especially the most vulnerable one, uh, a better life. Uh, and uh, this, uh, can, this objective can be uh, pursued in very many ways, very creative, innovative ways. Uh, and uh, this is why we believe uh, the uh, SEB uh, uh, could help out with this award uh, in uh, trying to, uh, as I said, spread the knowledge of uh, good practice and why not even represent the right stimulus to come with new uh, with new ideas. Now, uh, as uh, the fate would have it, uh, the SEB award uh, happens to be. Uh, Seb time story. 
because uh, you know the the SEP pandemic uh, uh, just uh, uh, erupted uh, uh, around uh, around the time of our first uh, of our first award. And uh, this, uh, if you will, is a strange coincidence uh, that has uh, made uh, the purpose of the award that I was describing even more relevant because COVID has been um, a tragic event that uh, has once again hit the most vulnerable groups, the artist, it has uh, created uh, uh, new opportunities. Well, I would say no, I wouldn't call it opportunities. That is that created new uh, areas where inequalities uh, became uh, uh, a drag for the uh, most vulnerable. Let, let's uh, let's think about uh, uh, schools being closed. Uh, clearly. Pupils, children in disadvantaged family were, for example, uh, you know, the digital divide uh, really hit, suffered, suffered most. But uh, all the clouds have a sing silver lining. Uh, uh, this new situation gave uh, rise to new ideas, to new way where social entrepreneurship uh, express itself uh, in finding new ways uh, where the objective of fostering social inclusion could be reached, could be obtained. And indeed, uh, in the uh, last, last year, we received a project nomination from 27 countries. So really a variety of, uh, circumstan of uh, territorial circumstances combined with a variety of type of actors, academic institutions, NGOs, uh, social enterprises, municipalities, association, networks. And this is by no means uh, uh, an extensive list of type of entities. So, you know, we are really uh, very, very happy to realize uh, the wealth of ideas, goodwill, uh, ingenuity that is, uh, is, out, uh, is out there. I mean, some uh, of the ideas were you know, innovation on, if you will, the most uh, common traditional sectors. That you know, remain vital, but the one of uh, you know health uh, and social uh, care uh, in uh, the inclusion of migrants. But in addition uh, to that, uh, uh, new innovative ways uh, were, uh, were 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 discovered. So, uh, and you know, we were really uh, presently presently surprised by the number and the quality of ideas that were, were put forward. Indeed, uh, you know, we, we uh, uh, had uh, a very hard time uh, in finding, nominating uh, uh, a winner, in selecting the group, even the, sh the shortlist, given the, the quality of uh, uh, the projects that were generally uh, <clears throat> put forward. So, uh, the uh, competition is going to be open uh, in terms of uh, 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 projects to be presented until the 20 of April, after, after which the, an expert panel will uh, examine and score the eligible, eligible projects. And uh, we will have uh, the most uh, promising five Project that will be uh, that will be shortlisted, uh, and uh, in July there will be uh, the winner, which will be recognized uh, uh, in uh, at an award ceremony. Uh, but um, I'm sure that uh, this year will uh, will be as difficult as it proved uh, <laughs> last year to uh, find 
five uh, five roads uh, to to nominate. Not because uh, there were too few, but because there were too many. And uh, of course, you know, a competition that uh, uh, that is good. There's really very many uh, applicants. So uh, I really encourage. Uh, uh, you who are listening to my words, uh, not only to present uh, uh, projects uh, uh, yourself, but just uh, spread the word around because uh, I and the panel of experts really look forward to be again in the difficult position uh, to try and choose uh, and, and have to choose uh, between so many good projects. Thank you for your attention and have a good day. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Monticelli, for this very nice introduction. And uh, I'm now very pleased to um, introduce the members of our panel today. We have with us uh, Antonella Noya, who is the head of uh, social economy and innovation at the OECD. We have uh, Guillaume Capel, who is uh, a social entrepreneur an innovator, um, founder of uh, Singa, uh, and also member of the CEB jury, that's uh, important to mention. Uh, and last but not least, of course, we have our uh, vice governor for uh, target group countries, Mr. Botic, Mr. Thomas Botic. So let's kick off the discussion with, with Antonella. Uh, we have seen in the recent decades that uh, social economy and entrepreneurship has been gaining ground. Do you think that in the aftermath of COVID, uh, we would be able to, to harness the potential of this sector a little bit better than until now? Thank you very much, uh, Yelika, and thank you very much, uh, Governor Monticelli, for having invited uh, me to this important event. I think it is very important uh, that the bank uh, recognize and values uh, social economy and social organization. And for sure, this was a, would have not been the case uh, a few years ago, and certainly not 25 years ago, when the OECD started to work uh, on this uh, area. Uh, so um, I would like to say that uh, I think that we can all agree on the fact that uh, uh, crises have constantly been accelerators of change. And we can also for sure say that the COVID-19 pandemic has been an extreme stress test for our countries, community and individuals. But it has also brought to the fore the importance of the social economy and social entrepreneurship as essential drivers to foster resilience, economy and society. At the OECD, uh, we have recently done studies and we have on social economy and COVID, and we have observed that all around the world, social economy organizations have really responded like never before to the challenges brought by the pandemics at international, uh, national, and local uh, level. So, Yelika, to answer your question, but I will elaborate obviously a bit more. Yes, I think that we can definitely say that the post COVID recovery could be and will be the catalyst for harnessing the full potential of social entrepreneurship. But why so? Because in the context of this uh, growing uh, concern related to climate change, uh, increasing economic uh, inequalities, uh, social exclusion, uh, a rethinking of the development approaches uh, is really needed. And I think that everyone can agree on the fact that the new par paradigm is also uh, needed. And this shift uh, towards this paradigm is already, new paradigm is already happening. And uh, social economy has um, started to be seen exactly as a pathway to transform society and to achieve those broader policies goal uh, that 
uh, was to address these challenges. So what we have seen and what we see nowadays is the fact that uh, social economy uh, starts to have a more central place uh, in many strategic uh, agendas, be this at international level, and I can only mention, for instance, uh, uh, the European Commission, which has recently launched the Social Economy Action Plan, after having recognized the social economies as one of the 14 industrial ecosystem. And ILO will focus uh, on social economy at their next uh, international conference. The United Nations uh, are preparing uh, a resolution, and I will tell you later what the OECD uh, is doing uh, uh, in this perspective. And then we see that at national level, there are many, many countries which are uh, uh, adopting uh, framework laws on social economy and social entrepreneurship or, or law to legislate or, or strategy. And at the regional level uh, and at city level, we see that uh, social economy is becoming uh, an important element of the development uh, uh, strategy. Uh, so we have also seen that, uh, of course, uh, social economy has been impacted by the crisis. Social economy organizations have suffered but they have been, for most of them, very agile to change their model. Uh, for instance, going digital, which was not evident for most uh, small uh, social enterprise organizations. And so uh, social economy, as demonstrated, uh, is uh, resilience. And this was not the case just for this crisis, but also for the uh, previous one, the financial global crisis, in which we have seen, for instance, that the employment growth for social economy organization has been higher compared to traditional firms. What makes the social economy resilient uh, is the nature of these activities and also the business and governance uh, model that seems to be more equipped uh, to resist to shock because social and solidarity economy uh, have uh, always paired profit with uh, social objectives. So uh, they really have a double, this double, sometimes triple bottom lines to deliver on social, uh, economic and environmental impact. And uh, I would also say that uh, not only the activities and the services uh, that the range of social uh, economy organization provide, and the governor was mentioning some of them before, for instance, the health sector, the social services, and the work integration. So not only these activities can help mitigate the direct impact uh, of a crisis, but we see that they, uh, they are also starting to mitigating the long uh, the, the medium and long-term effect of the COVID-19. And so I want to conclude by saying that uh, we see that the number of countries have uh, put the social economy at the center of their uh, resilience and recovery uh, plans, and they have uh, provided some support measures and packages to support the development of the social economy. And I think that this is also show that uh, the post-COVID is indeed a catalyst uh, to harness uh, the full potential of social entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonella. Uh, this is a very nice overview of the sector, but uh, maybe it's time to change perspective a little bit uh, and uh, go to the trenches so to speak. So, uh, Guillaume, from your very uh, first-hand experience, can you tell us a little bit how does the landscape look like now and what are some of the challenges you're confronted with? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I can tell you uh, things that I know for sure uh, because I teach the social entrepreneurship uh, for two years and there are some data that are I think are interesting. Uh, in France, uh, social business represents 10% of the French economy. 
Uh, we know it's uh, more resilient uh, to crisis than other businesses. Mostly women work in it. And we've seen that it's really attractive for youth. 70% uh, of um, uh, people between 18 and 30 years old say they want to work in a company uh, that puts purpose uh, and, um, and social impact uh, as, a, as a very important criteria. And, um, and so this, the fact that um, we have an economy that is a uh, business economy that is strong, but, you know, really small in comparison with the rest, it's only 10%. Um, the fact that it's not representative of the entire society, it's representative um, mostly of women today. Uh, and actually, if you look at the people who are in charge, you know, this organization, that's when you see a shift also, because you, you actually have a, a lot of men. So this is an economy that has, that is um, also, uh, that needs to improve a lot, uh, I believe. Uh, but that's, um, that's a, an economy that I think is going to really grow in the future. Uh, because first, I think it's the only way <laughs> we uh, have a peaceful uh, and a sustainable future. And also, I think uh, different crises, the financial crisis in 2008, uh, the migrant crisis in 2015, the, the health uh, crisis in 2020, um, have motivated actually a lot of people to get involved in that economy. And, um, you know, we, we believe it so much. Uh, our new CEO is actually the former uh, Minister for Social Economy uh, in, in France. So uh, the reason after 10 years of Singa, the reason why also we uh, choose him uh, to, to take over and to, to lead for the next 10 is uh, because we really believe we, um, there is an interesting line between business and social impact um, that, that we need to develop. And, um, and just on a... On what's lacking today, I think, um, I feel like we, we're lacking frameworks to actually measure our impact and maybe to, to have um, uh, the capacity also to compare. It's really easy to measure your growth. That's the, that's the money you make at the end of the year. Uh, but it's not so easy to measure your social impact today. And, um, and so this is clearly something where we, we need to progress. And also, I believe uh, we need more investments. I've seen um, the need... For, for social impact growing and growing in the past 10 years. But I haven't seen uh, also the capacity uh, and, and investment growing the same way. So that's, uh, that's also one of the areas where I would be looking for change. It's great that you mentioned investment uh, because we actually have uh, the vice governor of a development finance institution here with us. Uh, and not just anyone, but the one which has an exclusively social mandate. So uh, the question for you, uh, Vice Governor Bortek, is uh, basically, you know, how does the CEB approach this sector of, of social economy and social entrepreneurship, precisely given its uh, you know, social social mandate and scope? Thank you. Thank you, Yelitsa, and hello to, 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 to everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, social entrepreneurship, as you have mention uh, naturally uh, resonates with the ECB and its, uh, and its uh, social, the unique social uh, mandate and uh, for 65 years we have been championing social cohesion in Europe and, uh, and we recognize uh, that social entrepreneurship can act as, as a key element or, or, or other driver of social, social cohesion. And you know, this award is more than merely a financial aid to the individual innovators out there that uh, see a, uh, more, more inclusive futures for the communities uh, around them. Principally, it's a recognition and a symbolic confirmation to entities that have already taken the first, and I would say the hardest step, in developing uh, an enterprise that strives for the advancement of uh, public interest. And um, indeed, we have seen in the last couple of years, at the peak of the health and 
economic crisis of a lot of uh, individuals uh, that have been uh, able to adapt and, and break through in supporting themselves and, and their community. Uh, unfortunately, we have observed that around the world, but also in, in Europe, the pre-existing inequalities and, and vulnerabilities have been exacerbated by the crisis. And we have seen for the first rise in extreme poverty in two decades, and the gross inequality is being uh, created within and uh, between our countries. So marginalized groups have been unable to, to maintain jobs and have had unequal access to healthcare, to education, to, to decent housing. And during this time, uh, the, the public institution's response has been sometimes not enough to address the needs of, uh, of hard-hit communities. So it lies therefore also in the hands of the people, including socially-minded entrepreneurs, to take transformational initiatives like, uh, like the, the ones we have seen in the previous uh, editions of this award, and step up to the challenges we are all facing. So social entrepreneurship can act not only uh, as an engine of broad-based growth, but also as the glue that binds communities together and enriches social, uh, social cohesion. Because it can create job opportunities, sustainable growth and prosperity, including uh, in remote uh, areas. So uh, I would say that the CB recognizes that individual persons and communities are capable of doing uh, great things. Uh, as we know, growth and output come from innovative and new enterprises. So social entrepreneurship takes this further by making growth truly, um, truly inclusive. And therefore, we strongly support activities in this domain to promote stronger, inclusive, greener, and sustainable economies in uh, throughout uh, all our 42 uh, member states, our shareholders. I will stop here. Thank you, Mr. Vacek. Um, I suggest we go back to OECD, which uh, has been a pioneer in this sector. And uh, Antonella, you mentioned yourself, 25 years of work in this sector. That's quite impressive. Uh, but perhaps you would like to share with us some of the more recent initiatives that uh, you think uh, the public should know about. Thank you, Yelika, for giving me this uh, this opportunity. Indeed, uh, OECD has been working for 25 years on uh, social economy, social entrepreneurship, and social innovation. And uh, what we have done and continue to do is to, I think, to contribute to the conceptual knowledge uh, of social and understanding of social economy and social enterprises, which at the time when we started was really not uh, not uh, very well known and not clear at all as uh, as uh, a notion and uh, i am happy to say that uh, our first uh, uh, publication on social uh, enter enterprises uh, was released at the end of the 90s and it was i think the the first uh, one among the international or organization so i think that it was important uh, that an organization such as OECD uh, pioneered uh, the understanding of the field and also contributed to show uh, the contribution of social economy and social uh, enterprises uh, to economic uh, development. And what we have also done and we are already doing is to support the development of uh, social economy ecosystem. Among the very recent uh, initiatives that we have under taken, I would like to mention, uh, first of all, the OECD Global Action on Promoting Ecosystem for the Social and Solidarity Economy, which we have uh, launched two years ago uh, with the support of the European Commission. And this Global Action covers all the European uh, countries plus uh, 
uh, six other countries, Brazil, Canada, India, Korea, Mexico, and the United States. And with this action, we really aim to understand uh, what public initiative uh, can be pursued at local, national, and international level to foster social economy development. And uh, there are uh, two important pillars in, in the framework of this uh, global action. And one is exactly uh, what uh, Guillaume was rightly mentioning. We are working on social impact measurement, which is indeed, uh, although a very populated land, uh, quite an inexplored one, and certainly uh, one which still needs to be able to capture the specific impact of social economy organization. So we are working on this. We will release a manual uh, at the end of this year, and we hope that we will be able uh, to help uh, with this. The other pillar is the legal frameworks, which is another important element uh, to raise these visibilities. After all, uh, uh, social impact measurement is all a way to raise the visibility of uh, social enterprises, uh, social economy, their concrete impact, and uh, codifying what they are to legal framework or strategy is also an important one, because still maybe the general public and investors, investors uh, need to have a clear picture of what they are. And we are working on many other uh, initiatives and again, and uh, Guillaume will be pleased, we are working on uh, a, an analysis on the youth-led uh, social enterprises because we see that there is this appetite uh, of young people really to find the meaning uh, in what they do in they are doing professionally so uh, and, but we see that they face a number of barriers that are maybe general uh, to many social entrepreneurs but uh, some specific to young social entrepreneurs so we have uh, prepared the questionnaire studies. we have uh, disseminated uh, all around the world we have adapted into 80 countries, we have uh, gathered uh, 700 answers, and based on this and our analysis, we will look some recommendation to policymakers on how they can help uh, young people to become uh, entrepreneurs. We are doing the same uh, exercise for women who are in, an important uh, part of the social economy, and so we will uh, see how we can address also the gap, because there are still gaps in, uh, in, uh, in the social economy. And um, I could uh, continue because we are doing uh, many, many other things, but I will uh, stop here. Maybe I just want to say that one of our uh, objectives as OECD is really to mainstream the social economy uh, and also to connect it to the different uh, um, uh, mega trends. For instance, green circular economy. We have just released a policy brief to explore the link and the synergies between the circular economy and the social economy, and to show how social economy has also been pioneering this uh, circular economy uh, uh, practice. And before uh, stopping, I promised that I would say what OCD is doing at the global level. So uh, we are now preparing an, some high level guiding principles uh, for social economy that are likely to translate it into an OECD uh, legal instruments. And we have a number of countries which have uh, requested the OECD to do so, which are supporting us. We are working with them. We will have some uh, consultation with uh, uh, stakeholders in the social economy. And uh, so we hope that we will uh, provide uh, this policy framework which will uh, empower countries to improve their policy ecosystem and ultimately uh, in a 
allow all the stakeholders to benefit for, from a stronger social economy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Antonella. You have, in fact, responded to some of the points that uh, Guillaume brought up earlier in terms of what is currently lacking in the sector. But, but maybe, Guillaume, you can tell us again from your very much uh, first-hand experience, what kind of support does the sector need, uh, in your view, in order to develop its full potential? Um, just before I start, I, I don't know, There's, I think there's one microphone that is making a bit of a noise so if uh, you could switch them off thank you so much and um so um at singa we believe first uh, that a social taxonomy um, is going to be a big deal for a lot of social entrepreneurs um we've uh, we've created like carbon taxonomy uh, i don't know exactly when but i know that uh, also social taxonomy is coming and um, it's um, also that taxonomy that's going to help a lot of companies transition uh, to a, a new model because I think it's not really about just all the social entrepreneurs that are creating their companies right now. It's also about all the companies that exist today that are will that will have to shift towards a more social economy. And. Um, uh, to me, the most important support and the one that is going to change the game is uh, the public and the private investment in uh, in the new economy. And this is actually why uh, I'm starting a new project uh, also called Common Ground, uh, which is the first European VC uh, that is going to invest in um, immigrant entrepreneurs in Europe. Um, because I've seen uh, so many talents coming from all over the world that uh, are not getting uh, investment in the same way that a uh, European uh, get, and uh, it's too bad for the European economy. It's too bad for it's too bad for them, but it's also too bad for a lot of sectors. Uh, so this is a um, this is also something that I'm starting in 2022. And uh, last but not least, I think maybe this is even more important than what uh, maybe institutions can do. Uh, I think it's pretty easy for us right now to cover ourselves behind um, uh, sentences like, uh, I follow the rules, uh, I do things by the book, uh, there are some good practices, so we follow them. Um, but in a period of transition, uh, I think the people who are going to matter uh, they will be actors. They are going to do things that are not so safe, not so secure, not so like uh, exactly following the line uh, of uh, maybe institutions they are working in. And they're never going to say, I'm just doing my job. They're not going to try to find excuses um, uh, that we, we sometimes use um, because we are in a time where uh, social cohesion and also uh, the climate situation uh, are at stake and, and we need to be uh, all of us uh, brave and, and, and willing to try also new things. And so I think what can support social entrepreneurs the most is not an institution, it's not um, a, a process, it's, it's also us, it's the things we're going to do uh, in the next five to ten years, each of us. Thank you very much, Guillaume, and also thank you for the sneak preview into your new initiatives uh, for yeah. this year. It sounds very exciting. Uh, and uh, I would like to now give the floor to, to Vice Governor Borshi to tell us a little bit how the financial institutions like the CEB can, can support the, the social economy and, and social entrepreneurship sector, and, and what are some of the examples? Thank you, Yelitsa. With pleasure. Uh, well, as we have seen, uh, social entrepreneurship often starts with with simple idea or ideas, which are which are then transformed into innovative solutions to the problems of social exclusion and uh, unemployment. So it is fundamental for us to support this by focusing on our core approach. So what do we do, as uh, said, as a financial institution, so provide loans with uh, favorable terms, as well as, as grants for technical assistance and expertise 
to support these ideas uh, uh, to develop and grow into concrete projects. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we also uh, may provide technical support during project uh, implementation. Uh, as I said, we finance projects uh, with high social impact all around, uh, uh, all around Europe. So let me give you just four examples uh, how uh, our work promotes social entrepreneurship. Uh, the first one is uh, our support to Cooperative Bank of Kardica with a 2 million loan to facilitate access to finance for local uh, MSMEs, especially the smallest ones. Uh, and this financing has helped the, the cooperative bank to continue to support its business lending activities, particularly in, in Thessaly, which is the third most populous region in Greece, yet one of high unemployment. So micro-enterprises, including startups, women entrepreneurs, smallholders, cooperative and social enterprises have benefited from enhanced access to finance thanks to this project. Another example uh, comes from the Netherlands. Uh, over the last decade, uh, the, the CEB has been providing critical financial incentives for businesses that do social good through its partnership with uh, Rabobank, including uh, through a, a sizable 100 million social impact loan in 2016. Uh, Another example is uh, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, where in 2019 we have approved a 5 million loan to microfin microcredit company in, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And uh, this company specializes in agriculture finance, providing instrumental resources to micro enterprises for their productive investment. So, so the, the, the funds deployed by the, by, by the CEB uh, are expected to benefit at least 3,800 micro businesses uh, and farms. And finally, uh, the last year, uh, uh, we approved a 3 million loan uh, as part of uh, our uh, Roma Entrepreneurship Development Initiative. Uh, uh, ready. And this uh, ongoing initiative improves access to funding for uh, entrepreneurs in Roma communities in Bulgaria, North Macedonia. Romania and Serbia. So this project aims to enhance economic activity in and beyond Roma communities. It, support, uh, it supports employment and creation of job opportunities, uh, build self-reliance and encourage commercial links between, between the Roma and the user market networks. So these were the four examples uh, uh, I, I'm really happy to share with you. And to conclude, um, uh, you know, we have been successfully supporting vulnerable population groups for decades, uh, and we are really eager to continue partnering with the relevant regional, uh, local and other institutions in, in, in the future. Thank you very much, and oh, I would like to thank uh, all three of our panelists. This is a very interesting discussion, and it's good to know that there are uh, all kinds of interesting initiatives coming up in the sector, and I think especially the impact uh, and social impact measurement framework is something that we would all want to have on our radar. Um, at this point, I would like us to uh, refocus on the award itself. Uh, and uh, I would like to actually give the floor to Snežana Samadic Marković, who is uh, the Director General of Democracy at the Council of Europe, but also uh, the President of the CV Award Jury. So, uh, Snežana. Uh... Thank you, Yelitsa, and uh, indeed uh, the happiness is all mine. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, the debate, and I can also say that uh, indeed I agree with Guillaume that uh, those who would do, who would do the, the kind of breakthrough are individuals, social entrepreneurs uh, that, uh, that start everything. But I wouldn't agree with Guillaume when he says that maybe institutions are in the second um, sort of i mean it's not important what institutions do then it is important i would say and in this uh, i know guillaume didn't say <laughs> that institutions were not important but uh, that the, what what is important are the entrepreneurs but we are here for them and you know and this is what i think it's also important with the award uh, not only to 
award what uh, what is uh, social entrepreneurship but uh, confirm their importance promote them and uh, and uh, uh, put this issue on the agenda and uh, i can tell you that uh, when uh, shortly after the launch of the first edition of the uh, council of europe uh, 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 sorry sep council of europe development bank award for social cohesion uh, there was a global pandemic. <clears throat> it broke out with far-reaching uh, consequences for our health, for economies and societies. That was said before, <clears throat> and it brought to the uh, to the fore inequalities that have been damaging the social fabric of our societies for too long, as uh, uh, Vice Governor Bocic said too. And it has led to new global understanding. Uh, that uh, social cohesion cannot be taken for granted. Antonella confirmed that true uh, too for this global understanding. And in this context, that we have completed two rounds of, of a SEB award, attracting uh, uh, interest that has so far, I would say, suppressed our expectations. And um, last year, we received the project uh, nominations uh, from 27 countries, which in my opinion is a clear signal that our message of supporting social cohesion resonates across Europe. Innovative projects have been submitted um, by social entrepreneurs, by, I mean, individuals, but also by NGOs and uh, also by academic institutions, by municipalities, associations, networks, other entities. Uh, and uh, they all have uh, one thing in common, namely the overarching uh, over over umbre umbrella of social uh, good. And some of the most common uh, sectors in which uh, social economy organizations provide vital services to meet the needs of, of their communities uh, is, of course, health and social care, uh, integration and inclusion of migrants, uh, gender equality, um, creating opportunities uh, uh, for Roma, as Thomas mentioned, for children, youth, and, and the harnessing the use of digital technology, which Antonella mentioned as well as important. Now, as we launch the third round of the SEB Award, we would like to invite small organizations or individuals across Europe and uh, based in one of our 42 member uh, countries to nominate um, projects with uh, a strong uh, social impact, projects that make a, a, a difference in their communities. Their contributions for social cohesion will be, um, will be assessed on, on, on impact, sustainability, and of course, innovation. Uh, the competition will be open until 20th of April after which uh, an expert panel will examine and score all the eligible entries. The most promising five shortlisted projects will be evaluated by us, by an independent jury of five eminent members, and the winner will be uh, recognized at an award ceremony in early July. So we look forward to receiving your nominations and discovering new examples of innovation and solidarity, putting people and communities at the heart of action. Thank you very much, Snezhana. This is uh, very inspiring indeed. And uh, we are looking forward to, to discovering uh, new innovative social projects uh, in this round of competition. So as we approach uh, the end of the event, um, Instead of uh, parting words, uh, we would like to leave with you uh, a very brief video of our um, winner from last year. It's, it's a small social enterprise based in Moldova, which um, employs uh, persons with disabilities uh, uh, and, and uh, is uh, very much uh, implanted in its uh, local community. So um, enjoy watching and uh, don't forget to submit your nominations until the 20th of April.
În 2012 am decis să creăm o întreprindere socială care are prin esența sa misiunea sau obiectivul de a crea locuri de muncă pentru tineri cu dizabilități de aici la Răzeni și tineri din alte categorii defavorizate. Noi suntem la cantină în jur de 12 persoane. Colectivul, de fapt, este mult mai mare. Avem și chelneri, șoferi, contabili și așa mai departe. În cadrul întreprinderii Floare de Cireș avem un program special destinat instruirii la locul de muncă. Peste 150 de fete și băieți tineri au beneficiat de serviciile de instruire și de angajare. Vem câte două ture, facem patru luni de zile, câte 11 tineri în tur. Nu lucrează nicăieri, le-a fost un pic mai greu să se încadreze, dar acum lucrează foarte bine, se descurc foarte bine. Un lucru foarte motivant pentru noi. Sunt bucuroasă că am așa serviciu. Mi-a făcut prieteni. Prieteni și mei buni. Tatiana, îi doresc sănătate, răbdare, putere și poftă mare. Omul când este mulțumit și apreciază mâncarea, suntem și noi foarte mulțumiți. Ca să fie gustat, trebuie depus mult suflet. Avem 36 de beneficiari care sunt persoane cu venit mic, persoane cu dizabilități. Beneficiază de un prânz cald 3 zile în săptămână. Păi, e leu, dar meu. Atât cu mâncare la timp și bună mâncare. Sunt bucătăresc cu mâini de aur, se de fac mâncare la catering, Moldova este mulțumită de ele. Premiul pentru coeziune socială considerăm în primul rând că este o recunoaștere a eforturilor și a rezultatelor muncii noastre. Meritul la aparține tuturor membrilor echipei noastre. Premiul va fi investit în realizarea acestui vis, să avem cât mai curând o brutărie socială aici la Răzeni. Mulțumim mult băncii pentru dezvoltare a Consiliului Europei pentru...